here this is the pectoral region right on on the pectoral region what you are finding is the mammary gland which is female it's developed so it's called breast first of all you need to draw some lines the lines of incision so i'm drawing it for you because this is what you'll have to do further i'm just introducing you today so first of all what you'll do is palpate the jugular notch and draw a straight line in the median plane reaching up to the zipper sternum then the other line here you can draw is along the clavicular margin reaching up to the acromion then the next line is here from zipper sternum right it is the seventh rib which you know it's the true rib the last two rib that reaches to the sternum so you keep drawing a transverse line like this reaching up to the mid axillary line from zipper sternum now you draw an oblique line reaching towards the axilla right and this will insert to the areola and it will further continue along the anterior axillary fold like this reaching to the upper portion of the axilla so these are the two flaps you can see now you can easily reflect the skin flaps just draw the lines ध्यान से सुनो ठीक है तो मिड लाइन इंसिजन देना है चाहे ऊपर से चाहे नीचे से यू कैन कंटिन्यू इतना इंसिजन देंगे दैट इट शुड गो अराउंड वन मिलीमीटर डीप नॉट वेरी मच डीप बिकॉज वी वॉट वी आर ट्राइंग इट टू प्रिवेंट द सुपरफिशियल पार्शल बिकॉज इट्स अ फीमेल कैडवर वी विल ट्राई टू ब्रिंग आउट द ब्रेस्ट टिश्यू एज वेल नेक्स्ट हम इसी को अब आगे जो लाइन ऑफ इंसिजन दी है उस पर ट्रेस करेंगे अब हम अराउंड द अपर मार्जिन ऑफ क्लाबिकल फिर अलॉन्ग दब्लिक लाइन इंसिजन ला रहे अब अलॉन्ग द मार्जिन ऑफ एरियोला अब लास्ट क्या रह जाता है अलॉन्ग द lower portion of this you know the transverse incision from the zipper sternum reaching to the mid axillary line this is a pointed portion pull up this flap it has been marginalized from all the sides now what we will do is just retract the soft tissue the superficial fascia from down below obliquely along the inner surface of the skin we are just retracting the superficial fascia and that is adipose connective tissue here tell me now what will be the nerves being cut out while i'm pulling up this flap cutaneous nerves nerve supply of the skin of the breast subcutaneous nerves and vessels they very fine structures they will not be easily be seen ye jo minute minute cut rahi hai na these are some blood vessels so what is this black blood blood vessels hai cutaneous bataya na that includes both arteries and तो स्किन के नीचे वाला पोर्शन क्या कहलाएगा डर्म इज राइट एंड ये जो हम पुल कर रहे हैं इसी को ही क्या कहते हैं लेदर सुपरफिशियल फाशा इज एक्चुअली द फैट तो ब्रेस्ट है इट इज अ कंटेंट ऑफ सुपरफिशियल फाशा इट्स अ मॉडिफाइड स्वेट ग्लैंड राइट बेसिकली इट्स अ कंटेंट ऑफ डर्म इज नॉर्मली बट चूंकि ये मॉडिफाइड है तो इसमें ये सुपरफिशियल पार्शा में पूरा ब्रेस्ट प्रेस करता है यहाँ पे देखो ये कौन सी मसल दिखना शुरू हुई है यस वेरी गुड हाँ तुम इधर से शुरू करो right now we are focusing on the pectoral region we are dissecting out the breast
इतना कम से कम फैट स्किन पे नहीं खाए हम जो रिफ्लेक्ट कर रहे हैं उसके साथ फैट ज्यादा ना जाए ताकि हम ना स्पेसिमेन और ब्रेस्ट भी प्रिजर्व कर सके क्योंकि सारा स्किन अगर फैट उधर चला जाएगा तो स्पेसिमेन डिस्ट्रॉय हो जाएगा We have dissected today all the pectoral region. So you, you all know the lines of incision which I drawn. That was clear. Now after, you now when we are reflecting the skin, leaving down all the fat, the adipose tissue, which is forming this counter of the breast. You are seeing that this. Skin flaps on the, the two flaps from reflected. Now the deep below you are seeing is this adipose connective tissue, the lip, the fat. Similarly, as on the opposite side also it's been reflected. There are two flaps like this. Now what you're seeing is the breast. Now breast, you know, is a content of superficial fascia. It's a modified sweat gland, right? And then this is why is it slippery like you know i'll tell you deep below there will be a loose areolar connective tissue and that is called retro memory space the dissection of breast will continue further tomorrow uh, while going back you always need to make this habit of covering the dissected parts with the skin flaps so that it doesn't dry up okay so that was for today we got we made these in lines of incision and we reflected these flaps from the pectoral region or the front of the chest like this. So the two flaps are reflected like this from there, both sides. And this is how after removing the skin flaps, you are seeing this subcutaneous tissue. And here, because it's a female cadaver, you find enough of adipose connective tissue that's fat because of the breast. So now the next step of dissection would be like removing the breast. So the removal of the breast will be again the same. You will give a midline incision, not so deep because you know we will have to preserve the deep fascia also. So just give an incision, then here incision, then slowly and slowly you can just place your hand below to that. Then we will lose any other connective tissue below to the breast. So just placing your hand below to the breast, you can easily reflect the entire breast. It will be brought out easily, right? Because of the loose connective tissue. So that will and what will be the muscles that you find below to this? What is the bed of the breast? Pectoralis major. Then pectoralis major and minor. Pectoralis minor you will find. On to which the breast is resting. What are the muscles? Yes, sir. And they say partly because you know it is extending into this. Mid, uh, mid axillary line, right? So, here also you will find that uh, you know the muscle here is serratus anterior. So, pectoral is major, major serratus anterior. What are uh, other muscles they lie below to the breast? You will also find is rectus abdominis, some fibers of rectus abdominis and external oblique abdominis. They might uh, they will also be part of the bed of the breast, okay? To the midline, just give an incision here. Now here I'm just giving an incision so as to deep below you finding is the muscles. So you can easily once you've just given a slight gap 
so as to reach below to the breast, you can easily place your hand below to this. Can you see? This is fascia covering pectoralis major. That is called superficial pectoral fascia. What is deep pectoral fascia? That lines behind to this pectoralis major and that is investing pectoralis minor as well. So that fascia, deep pectoral fascia is also called clavi pectoral fascia. एक तरफ से सिर्फ आपको ब्रेस्ट उठाना है उसके अंदर चले जाना है उसके बाद वहाँ से आप डीप फाशो को नीचे छोड़ते हुए सारा जो फैट है उसको ऊपर ले आना We are reaching to this fold of pectoralis major. What is this forming? This is the fold of pectoralis major. You know pectoralis major has an inverted J-shaped bilaminar insertion. Where does pectoralis major gets inserted? Where is pectoralis major inserted? So there is this intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove. So it has two lips. On the later lip, there is J shaped inverted bilaminar insertion of pectoralis major. So, because of that J shaped thing, you know, it gets twisted, it gets folded. The lower fibers of pectoralis major they twist and they move upside and they form the lower, you know, J has a long limb and a shorter limb. So, the lower fibers they twist and they get inserted on the short limb of J shaped insertion. And that's why you can palpate your axilla yourself. So you'll find that it forms the anterior wall of the axilla. So this is how you've seen that this right side breast has been completely brought out. And see the posterior surface. It's so clean. Why is it clean? Because there was a loose areolar connective tissue below to this. That is called retromammary space. There was all loose areolar. So it was very easy to reflect it. There were no adhesions, no fibrous strands. It was just kept over this loose areolar connective tissue. So just giving an incision on the you know periphery, you can place your hand below to that and just simply cut out the margins and you can bring it out like this. Got it? So this is the one specimen I brought it out. Similarly, now you can do it on the opposite side also. तुम करो क्या नाम है तुम्हारा? अभिजीत करो। अभिजीत करो तुम उधर का करो और इधर का तुम्हें ये सिस्टर देगा चाहे तो। अभिजीत तुम्हारा क्या नाम है? आदित्य करो तुम दोनों करो। बिल्कुल आराम से करो ना ये तुम्हारा इंसिजन देखो ऐसे जाना चाहिए अभी जी कि जो तुम्हारा इंसिजन हो ये ऐसे करके इससे इससे उठाओ इससे उठाओ यानी कि इस डी फाशिया से फैट को उठाते रहो और बता एक मिनट सुनो अब देखो फिंगर जा रही होगी नीचे तो फिंगर जा रही है थोड़ा सा फिंगर अंदर करके उसके बाद उसको ऐसे ऐसे करके परिफ्री से निकाल लो Now, actually, tell me, you've been taught about the breast, right? Yes, so, what is the internal structure of the breast? What is inside? 
How's it? Yes, it is. It is a modified shred gland. Shred gland. And what type of gland? Categori categorically, it is a compound tubular alveolar gland. Right? So you'll find the main ducts. You'll actually find there are lobules, 15 to 20 lobules. And each of those lobules, they have like you know those SNA, which are actually active during the lactation phase. So those SNA, they just open into those ductules. They open, then those join to form interlobular ducts, intercalated ducts, then interlobal ducts, and ultimately they all join to form. They are you know before opening at the nipples, they become a dilated thing that's called latissimus sinus, right? So this latissimus sinus, and then you have those latissimus ducts opening onto the nipples. If you take a transverse section, basically I will take no doubt some time, not right now. थोड़ा सा यू नो अभी सॉफ्ट एक बार थोड़ा सा हार्ड हो जाए तो प्रॉपर आएगा डिसेक्शन तो वो यू फाइन इनसाइड कि इसमें सारे में लुब्यूस में भी नॉट इजीली विजिबल बट यहाँ पे जो लिपल्स पे डक्ट्स खुलेंगे डेट इस फिर इस डक्ट्स यू माइड बी एबल टू सी देम Actually, to visualize them more clearly, so this is the cut section you can see, and they're like around 15, 20 lobes. So those are like fine, thin, fibrous septa, mm -hmm. and they're actually lig ligaments of the skin. When I taught you the skin, I believe I taught you something. Remember, the dermis is uh, you know overlying to this hypodermis, which is like a fatty tissue. Right, and the most connective tissue, or the loose areola connective tissue, no. and deeper to that is the deep fascia. So, actually, you know, it's like a sandwich thing. Dermis is a dense connective tissue, and deep fascia is a dense connective tissue. So, what lies in between is like a fatty thing that is adipose connective tissue. So, the dermis of the skin will actually slip over to the superficial fascia. So, as to prevent that, they are like. Ligaments binding from the dermis deep down to the deep fascia, and those are called the skin ligaments. Now what happens is that the breast itself is a you know content of superficial fascia. All what is like you know there was a skin covering, the skin covering here. I think the skin flaps have been removed. 
So all what, all what is covered with the skin. And there was a breast. And after removing the breast, now what point is the pectoral fascia? This actually is a deep fascia. And you call it as a superficial pectoral fascia. Why? Because there is another layer of pectoral fascia covering the, you know, behind to this deep uh, pectoralis major and it invests pectoralis minor as well and that's called clavipectoral fascia. So I was telling that the skin ligament will be present everywhere. So because the breast gets engorged here, so the ligaments binding this deep fascia to the skin of the breast, they also, you know, lengthen. And those are actually called the suspensory ligaments of Cooper, right? Suspension ligaments of Cooper. The purpose of that, those actually skin ligaments, the fascial tissue you'll find here, the actually is to hold up the breast tissue, right? To hold up the breast tissue. So that the suspension ligaments of Cooper. Okay. So and uh, anything, if you remember, that's the clinical signs of like carcinoma breast. No, you people generally get confused with that. The Curie orange is a different thing. That's the obstruction of the superficial pedix. What happens is like there is an involvement of carcinoma, like you know, the carcinoma happens like there is like a rapid growth of the tissue, right? So it gets adherent to the adjoining fascia compartments, maybe like to the fibrous septa, fibrous ligaments, or to the underlying deep fascia. So because when it gets involved with the suspension ligament of Cooper, so on the surface what you find is a dimple. So dimpling is a sign of involvement of ligaments of the breast on the skin if you find it's a dimple but if there are like more than two three four ligaments get involved so what happens there will not be dimpling rather there will be a patch of skin which is pulled inside and that's called puckering so puckering is when more than two three four ligaments get involved and when a single ligament involved there will be a dimpling sign so those are involvement of skin ligaments don't confuse with theory orange theory orange uh, that must have been taught to you regarding the superficial uh, lymphatics, lymphatic drainage of breast. So there is an obstruction to the superficial lymphatics, the skin. You know, there are skin follicles here. I told you the entire human skin is hairy, except palm and soul. So because those hair follicles and all, because there is you know, engorgement of the lymphatics in the below to the, in the superficial fascia, below the skin. So there appears to be the, like peel of the orange. That's called, you know, that is called PD orange. Okay. By the way, the majority of the superficial lymphatics they drain into which group of lymph nodes? In the anterior of the pectoral, the pectoral group of axillary lymph nodes. Okay. And even from the, you know, sub areolar plexus of sappy, below to this, below to this also, there is a plexus, lymphatic plexus. So, the lymphatic drainage from the subarular plexus, sappy, it also continues along those axillary tail of spells and reaches to drain into the anterior pectoral group of lymph nodes. So, what about the deep lymphatic drainage of the breast? The deep lymphatic drainage of the breast reaches through the lymphatics, which actually pierce the clavipectoral fascia. They will pierce this pectoralis major even. Then they will pierce the clavipectoral fascia and they will drain directly into the apical group of lymph nodes. So the, uh, the lymphatic drainage of the deeper portion of the breast is directed to the apical group. And there is like you know spread from one side to the other. There is internal mammaric group of lymph nodes, right? On either side. So involvement that leads to cross communication to the opposing breast as well. There are lymphatics which you know below to the diaphragm, subclinic group of lymph nodes. And, you know uh, they have like continuous. The lymphatics passing below the diaphragm reaching down to the sub area, you know, subclinic group of lymph nodes. So it can spread down to the normal reaching to the ovaries also. Remember, secondary of ovary due to this are the Kupen Berg's tumor, right? Okay, so keep you know, revising this. Lymphatic drainage of breast is a really important question for exam. Okay, and the medial half, the medial half basically drains into the internal memory. The lateral half drains into the anterior axillary. Like this is all about majority of the superficial portion, but the deeper portion, remember, directly to the. By the way, what is the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb? Where does this lymphatics from the upper limb drain into? 
in the lateral group of axillary lymph nodes, right? In the lateral group, except the thumb and its web. So the lymphatics from the thumb and its webs they accompany along the cephalic vein. And remember, cephalic vein was it was reaching here into delta pectoral groove, then reaching into this so intraclavicular fossa and then piercing clavicular fascia. So cephalic vein drains into the axillary vein. Along with that, the lymphatics from the thumb, they also run along with the cephalic vein. All its root is subcutaneous is throughout its length. And then uh, they drain into this infraclavicular group of lymph nodes. And they're also called cephalic group of lymph nodes. Remember. So thumb and its web, they have a separate lymphatic drainage. Infraclavicular or cephalic group of lymph nodes. Rest of the upper limb drains into the lateral group of axillary nodes. Okay. So you have seen that there are five receptor. This could better be visualized by staining or like you know using some dye and all. But here, if you can like you know see, uh, you see there are fine fine right lymphatic ducts. Laticiferous. Ah, uh, sorry. These ducts before terminating oh, or to the nipples, they also have a like a dilatation, right? Thinness. So, from each of these lobules, around 15 to 20, so there will be separate openings, right? Dikh raha hai? Yes, sir. Dikh raha hai? Yes, sir. Achche se dekho. Bohat sari ducts hain. Bohat sari ducts hain isme. Thik hai? Okay. So, Mm -hmm. Degree? Yes, sir. Ducks? Mm -hmm. Ducks opening in the windows? Mm -hmm. Should we ink dal ke? They accept them better. You try it some other time. Anyway, so that was about the uh, breast. We've gone through this. Now, 